I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. And this is a Patreon review, this time from Matt Sands, who wanted my thoughts on the Muppet movie from 1979. Now, if anyone wants to request pretty much any type of video, movie topic, review, whatever it may be, you can either do that by joining my Patreon or sending a request directly to my PayPal. Links are down below in the info box, both links. If not, no worries, but if so, thank you. But the movie he wanted me to talk about was the Muppet movie from 1979. And I'm not a guy that grew up a lot with the Muppets, to be perfectly honest. Uh, growing up, we had four channels, two versions of ABC, one of CBS, and one of PBS. And the very few times I saw PBS, I either saw a little bit of Reading Rainbow, the very opening credits of Doctor Who, or tiny bits of Mr. Rogers or Sesame Street. But even then, as a kid, when I was seven, eight years old, I was watching Predator. <laughs> I was watching Aliens. Or if it was a kid type of film, I was watching Ernest movies, the Jim Varney films, or Ninja Turtles, the cartoon, and the live action films, stuff of that nature. So I had seen, I think it was... I forget if it was the Muppet Caper or the one where they're in Manhattan. I forget which one it was. <coughs> and I, rem I do remember Muppet Babies on CBS. Muppet Babies. Da -na -na -na. I probably saw that first before even knowing what the Muppets were. So the Muppet Babies was probably, probably my first introduction. I did see the Muppets from, was it 2011 or so? Has it been that long? I didn't care for it. A lot of people loved it. I didn't care for the human characters. I didn't care for the new puppet. Uh, it felt like the actual Muppets were not, it, sometimes they feel like they were the stars of it. I know that's stupid to say, but, but like this, this at least felt like these Muppets were the stars. And they do have fun personalities, whether it be Kermit the Frog, or Fozzie Bear or Gonzo they do have a certain personality and they're likable characters and they are the stars of the film and it does some clever stuff it breaks the fourth wall it's the Muppets at the beginning they're showing a screening of the movie that we're going to see and the whole plot is Kermit is out singing in his swamp an agent from Hollywood, which is actually Dumb DeLuise, who worked with Burt Reynolds quite a few times and some of the Cannonball Run films, among others. He's an agent from Hollywood, and he goes, you know what? There's an audition for frauds in Hollywood. You should go there. He ultimately goes, and during this trip, we see how he first meets Fozzie and Gonzo and the chicken that I guess Gonzo's going to fuck. 
which almost blew my mind. I'm like, is this, is Gonzo and this chicken in a relationship? So is Gonzo a chicken fucker? To steal a line from Rob Zombie, Sally. See a chicken fucker? If so, I mean, teach their own. So I guess the joke Gonzo likes Cox is up in the air. Just chickens. I mean, cockadoo do I'm sorry, just I didn't know that. I didn't know Gonzo was in the chickens like that. Because he treats his chicken like a girlfriend. Okay. Again, different boats floats differently for people. I thought this had some good puppetry going off on that fucking tangent. There's some pretty decent effects, especially from 1979. Like, there's a shot where Kermit is riding a bicycle, and you see a full shot of the puppet working the bicycle. I thought that was pretty neat. And during their trip, it was entertaining to see all the cameos. I didn't realize how many people did a cameo in this. I mean, I mentioned Dumb De Louise, Elliot Gould, which he's been a lot of films back then, including the movie version of MASH. He was the guy who, in this movie, introduces Miss Piggy winning this pageant. Uh, Kermit goes into this bar and James Colburn, the manager, gets punched out. Telly Savalas, who loves you, baby? He's in the, with Carol Kane and Malin Khan, and they're all in this bar, which was idea. I'm like, wow, Carol Kane from Scrooge and Malin Khan from Blazing Saddles, and then there's Telly Savalas from. I don't know if people wouldn't know Telly Savalas nowadays or any of the people I'm mentioning. But he was Kojak and the old TV show. He was in Telly's Heroes or Clint Eastwood. Horror Express with Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing. He's been a lot of stuff. Other cameos, you got Bob Hope as an ice cream vendor. You got Richard Pryor. I forgot Richard Pryor was in this. He's a balloon vendor. Uh, Steve Martin as his waiter that has an attitude. Orson Welles appears at the end as a Hollywood producer. Mel Brooks appears as this professor but he's brought in by our bad guys to screw with Kermit's head because the actual bad guys is Charles Durning. Charles Durning what's the film people remember him the most? But if you look him up he's been a lot of stuff. He's on the TV show Evening Shade with Burt Reynolds Uh, he's a, a good accomplished actor and again I'm not sure what film people remember him the most from but if you look him up be like, oh I recognize him maybe and even Big Bird makes an appearance which I thought was interesting it, it, the movie it does play with like I said breaking the fourth wall like they pass Bat Bid Bird and ask if Bid Bird wants a ride and Bid Bird goes, oh no, I'm going to New York to try break into public television. Of course, Sesame Street. I don't, I mean, did all the dads work for me? Nah, I mean, someone goes, hey, the drinks are on the house. So all the patrons go on top of the building because they took on the house as literal But some of the jokes worked. Uh, I thought were clever. Then it made me laugh, but they made me smirk for the cleverness. When, oh, turn at the fork on the road, and then there's an actual fork. Now that didn't make me smirk. It's what Kermit says where he goes, I don't believe that. <laughs> that line reading of Kermit going, I don't believe that. <laughs> of seeing an actual fork in the road. That's what made me smirk. Or when they meet the band, which is Animal on drums and all that. Fozzie's going to 
explain it. And Kermit goes, you can't tell the story. You'll bore the audience. Well, what do we do? Just let them read the screenplay. <laughs> so I, I thought that was a bit clever. Sally, uh, I was joking before, serious, but, you know, joking about the whole gonzo chicken thing. Although, again, they probably are an item, I'm guessing. But watching this, you could not make this film today because of the way we are as a society. Which I can't blame it because of all that we've seen with the internet and stuff. If you try to purposely go with okay their characters and the romantic like Kermit and Miss Piggy it's always going to have people flying off to the vulgarity of sex and all that it's just how it's going to be you know that's why for example they're not going to make a Ninja Turtle film where a turtle well I guess they did Donnie had the hots for April but April never returned them and then that's why they didn't go for in that 2012 Turtles cartoon because they didn't want the idea put in oh April and Donnie are fucking because they know that's what people would lead to so then they don't really do that because of the society how our brains especially even younger or older folks or whatever just go to <laughs> what's the craziest thing we can think of it's a less innocent time is what I'm getting at. it's a lot less of an innocent time where when these films were made it was simply for hey romance like a love story that you would read to a kid you're not reading a love you know a story of romance and action and danger because you think your kids are going to think oh the prince and the princess are going to fuck and they're going to stick the thumb in the ass and they're going to give rim job no it's innocence society culture whatever has been lost and sadly with the invention of internet that was just bound to happen I'm not are we better are we worse for it I don't know I can only speak for myself and it's about how you're taught how you're brought up values decency public decency what you do privacy your own time I don't know why I'm going this I think I'm going this conversation because I see this film as a time period of innocence in which sounds stupid because it's the 70s there it was there was not a lot of innocence in the 70s but as in with kids films like this when they have a scene where Miss Piggy and Kermit and Miss Piggy's having a fantasy where they run into each other's arms and then she brings him down and Kermit puts his head up and she brings it back down if you put that scene in today's age if you put the exact same scene in a Muppet movie of today I, I don't think it would have the same reaction I think Sally it would have a negative reaction because they go oh my god they're fucked in and they're boinking and or well, they're probably given 69 or flying 69 it just people go over the top in their theories and all this and your brain and yeah, I, I was joking and, and earlier about that but take what I said and be 150% serious and we're going to ban we're going to do this so I don't know where the hell this tangent's going I guess I'm just saying, as I'm watching the film and knowing their in intents and purposes is of an innocent nature, it was nice to see, hey, develop the characters. They like each other. Miss Piggy wants a kiss from Kermit. Then when Miss Piggy fucks him over, Kermit doesn't really want anything to do with her for a bit. Because she just leaves his ass. <laughs> This is after she gets saved, which makes Miss Petey a bit of a bitch. But yeah, they Kermit met Fozzie Bear at this bar, and he's being a failed comedian, and no one's laughing at his jokes. Then they meet uh, Gonzo, 
who is driving a car with his chicken and his car flips onto Kermit's car and then he joins with his chicken and then they miss, meet Miss Piggy and then she joins in and she has the hots for Kermit and all the while being chased by Charles Durney because he wants Kermit as a spokesman for his chain of restaurants dealing with frog legs. Of course, and he wants to use him as the mascot. He says no, of course. Which I guess, I mean, in the world this movie takes place in, I guess that's puppets are normal. If that wasn't the case, you would think the fact that he walks and talks would be used to more effect than just a spokesman for your fucking restaurant. But it is in a world where puppets do exist because they do buy a car and this big monster I forget what he's called hairy monster works for the the guy at the used car lot so and you do meet them from time to time as this cast builds up like they meet the band they go to a place and they beat the doctor and his assistant the assistant the one that goes meep beep meep beep 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 And I do appreciate that again. It, it's not trying to dumb the audience. What I mean by that, it doesn't talk down to them. It does try to have some clever lines. Like when they're on the run and the, the band goes, Great, chase music is one of our best riffs. And the ending was a bit sweet. I think that's where the innocence popped in my head because the ending of this film where everything works out and they're singing to the camera about keep pretending keep believing and they start ratcheting it up and up and I do wonder if a kid would see that today and call bullshit on it because of how things are nowadays Where you know, back then you could have a movie where either love conquers all or but nowadays to be viewed as cheesy or con corny or sappy or or if you do it it's gotta be with a wink, it's gotta be with some kind of sarcastic view. And I can enjoy some of them, but I will say, even though I wouldn't say I loved the film, because again, some of the dads, they weren't bad. It's just, eh. Also, the the whole Charles Durning subplot, you honestly didn't even need it. I think you didn't even need that whole subplot. I guess it's like, well, we gotta have a villain in here. And I'm like, well, why? Why do you need a villain in here? This could just be about the journey in this road trip and all the ups and downs that goes in this road trip. That's like putting a villain in, I don't know, planes, trains, and automobiles. Planes, trains, and automobiles doesn't have a villain. Like, you just be a road trip. Just the whole Charles Journey stuff. And all oh, you also have Austin Pendleton, who I remember. He was the guy in Short Circuit who always kept saying, Stat. He was also with Hulk Hogan and Mr. Nanny. Because he played the, the father of the kids that Hulk Hogan has to watch out. And babysit. Protect. I, I just, I don't know. Anything to do with that just wasn't that interesting to me. To the point that, yeah, I don't think you needed it. But the movie does have his heart in the right place. Uh, Gonzo, I would like to have seen a bit more done with him. I mean, really, all I remember is he has his chicken that he's with. There's a point where he gets the balloons for Richard Pryor and he floats away. And then there is a bit where he sings a song where he's looking at the moon and he's like, he knows he's different and maybe he'll be back there someday 
I just alluding to the fact that he's an alien, which many, many years later they did a movie called Muppets in Space, which I never saw. I haven't seen a lot of the Muppet films. I didn't see Muppets in Space. I didn't see, I don't remember The Great Muppet Taper and Muppets Manhattan. I don't even know the title of it. So I don't even remember much of them. I do remember not liking the 2011 Muppets movie, but that, I think it's just called the Muppets. And that's just me. But this, I thought the puppetry was well done. The voice work of the Muppets were well done. Uh, for the most part, they were likable characters. PD, I didn't like. PD, I just thought was a bitch. When it got to, they save her from some of the bad guys, including Bill Brooks, who has this almost fake German accent because he's like a professor and he's going to experiment on Kermit because Charles Durning told him to fry his brain so that he will be more pliable or will listen to us more whatever the hell the plan was and when Miss Pity gets saved she just leaves and then when she comes back I don't remember her saying sorry or anything if she did, I missed it. So I, I didn't like her character, to be honest. But I know she tends to do that a lot. That's why I remember not really liking Miss Piggy too much. I'm like, watch out, Kermit. This girl is a bitch. You do better than this. A lot better. But you know, it has a good heart to it. The ending sweet. It has some jokes that are... bit more clever than I thought they would be that the movie breaking the fourth wall again some of it I, the movie itself was a bit more clever than I thought it would be and the cameos were fun kind of like oh there's that guy there's Bob Hope there's Richard Pryor there's Steve Martin there's Orson Welles that's cool some of the songs are sweet and it's it's a feel good movie for the family a you know, little bit of a road trip movie. Overall, not a bad film at all. Pretty decent flick. I liked it. So thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.